evening everyone it is once again Ted the speed learner and tonight what I'm going to talk about is the television of tomorrow now I'm not going to go heavy in depth with what I'm going to present in this particular video this is going to be kind of an introductory video and the facts made I'm hoping they're going to be a hundred percent accurate but if there's a few discrepancies you can go ahead and let me know there is a guy on YouTube that covers this much better than I do and so I'm going to let him do, give you the bigger, better details. His, his channel name is Antana Man, and you can go ahead and look him up after you watch this presentation. So let me go ahead and give you some details, and then you can go ahead and watch him, and you can learn more about what I'm going to talk about in this particular video. Anyway, how many of you people who are watching right now, and by the way, I'm running a live stream night right now, that is why you're seeing me at an angle, but um, you don't have to watch the whole live stream, you can just watch me right here, and I'll tell you essentially what you need to know. So how many of the people that are watching this video right now recall the days where cathode ray tube televisions were in every room of every house? If you can, well, that's fantastic, that's great, that's wonderful. But if not, well, sorry. <laughs> now, I challenge you to try to find a cathode ray television in any house today. A lot of them are all gone. As a matter of fact, when I started this YouTube channel 12 years ago, which is almost 13 now, I had a cathode ray television. You saw it in the videos. Of course, that's gone. And it'll never come back. Okay? So, in 1954, the National Television System Committee, otherwise known as the NTSC, okay, developed a standardized technology that allowed people to view television shows on their television screens regardless of which company they bought their television from. This standardized technology remained in effect until 2009. And after that it was just phased out and phased out and phased out until finally it was gone. And this year was the last year that like two or three uh, television stations still broadcasted in the NTSC format. That format is gone. Okay, so there you go, and you'll find that out if you talk, if you watch Antenna Man's videos on what I'm going to talk about next. During the 1980s, computer technology developed rapidly. Computer screen resolution was comprised of what is called picture elements. I'll say that again, picture elements. Now, picture elements. You have to keep in mind the word pixel is an abbreviation or an acronym for picture elements. That's what it is. And I discussed that in a previous video. Okay? And computer monitors became more as computer monitors became more sophisticated, videos were able to be displayed on computer monitors. You could literally watch television on your computer monitor. Okay? This led to television networks developing ways to display their programming on digital computer screens. And this led to the development of flat screen digital televisions, which most people watch television that way today. Okay? But one other thing led to the creation of the Advanced Television System Committee, otherwise known as ATSC, and that is the topic of this particular presentation. All right. The Federal Communication Commission, which is otherwise known as the FCC, wanted to license television bandwidth to telecommunication companies. In order to do this, they had to convert television signals from the f familiar NTSC, or otherwise known as the National Television System Committee, uh, their, their line of transmission, okay? that particular standard to ATSC which of course now is known as the Advanced Television System Committee standard. Okay, This led to the creation of DTV which is known today as digital television and it, they had converter boxes created and television antennas that are DTV compatible. Okay, That's, that's what led to all that. 
The official ATSC 1.0 standard, which is how you see television today, was rolled out at the very beginning of the, very, of the 21st century. And this conversion was basically converted into, it, it, was, it was completed in 2009. Okay? By the year 2009, almost every television station had actually converted to this ATSC 1.0 standard. That's why you watch digital television today, and that's why you don't see the NTSC standard anymore. Pretty much gone. Okay? Actually, it is gone. But this television signal, this particular standard, has its flaws. And mostly it's because of what is called line of sight. If you have a television station broadcasting from an antenna, and we have one right here in my town, and it broadcasts from an old-time antenna, okay? If that's working like it's supposed to, then what happens is as that, as that signal comes from that antenna to your rabbit ears or to your converter box, whatever, what happens is that it has to go through trees and it has to go through buildings and it has to go through any other obstruction. You name it, it has to go through that to get to that rabbit ears or whatever it's going to go into. And that's the problem. You have to keep in mind the earth is round and the curvature has an effect on those transmissions as well as trees, rocks, buildings, even the walls in your house will affect how you get that ATSC 1.0 signal. Okay? You also have to keep in mind that this digital television signal is more sensitive than the NTSC standard. So, like I said, the more things that block the signal, the more likely you're not going to see it. Okay? So that's why you need sophisticated antennas to receive these signals which have to travel large distances. And like I said, it's based on line of sight. All right, And even atmospheric conditions can cause this. Okay, If you have a storm directly overhead, you're not going to get as good of a signal as when the storm goes away. And there's other things that affect it, and Antenna Man will explain that to you. Okay, This is about to change. The Advanced Television System Committee is starting to roll out something called the ATSC 3.0 standard. In major metropolitan areas, television stations are starting to broadcast their programming using this new ATSC 3.0 format. But not every television station is using this format right at this moment. And that's something you have to keep in mind. To receive this signal, you either have to have a new set of rabbit ears or a new DTV converter box compatible with this ATSC 3.0 signal. Well, that equipment right now is very, very expensive. Okay. Now, the reason for this is they have just started rolling this out, and so therefore, they are have to manufacture hundreds if not thousands of these new boxes and these new rabbit ears. And that's expensive right now. After they get more of this equipment manufactured and more people buy this stuff, the price, of course, is going to drop. But it's going to be a while before that happens. I estimate at least three to five years before all those boxes and all those rabbit ears will finally be fully on the market. So if I were you, because there's not a great supply of them right now, and... Over half the television stations of the United States have not yet converted over to ATSC 3.0, and certainly none of the TV stations in my area have converted yet. At least if they have, they certainly haven't told us. So, until that happens, I wouldn't reach into your wallet and try to buy one of these new converter boxes. I mean, if you do, you want to experiment with it, go right ahead. But, if you're not willing to shuck out the big bucks, I'd wait a little while. You, they, things are not going to change right off the bat. You've got at least a good five years before anything major changes. Okay, so I would relax if I were you, and I would no, not rush out to Best Buy or rush out to Amazon and buy these new converter boxes because they may not have them, and even if they do, they're going to cost you a pretty penny. 
So, like I say, because ATSC 3.0 has not been fully released yet, I'd save your money. I really would. And that's all I've got to say about ATSC 3.0. I want to thank you for watching this presentation. You have yourself a wonderful week. I will tell you more in a future video, so I'd like for you to stay tuned.